<laughs> um, so he's really beloved, actually. And so I wanted to, I know, forget the movie aspect of it, but <laughs> I think it'd be helpful for you to see it and, and read it. I hope it's not too much. <laughs> Sort of making a statement, it's not. Sure. Yeah, like stains, like mineral deposits. And they were saying that maybe it was it was evidence of blood that they were, it was rolling down. Which I thought was really neat. With them and I just felt something. I don't know, I just felt something for them. I guess these two here would be just to show the aftermath of, of what happened, leaving them in, impoverished with nothing. Of the newborn babies, uh, so they were kind of like, um, they were kind of reading horoscopes for the newborns. Um, they also resemble the female Aztec warrior. Uh, because they died during childbirth. That was their fight uh, for the Aztec gods. Um, and no one else. Actually at one time a silo. And they had hay and all that stuff. So um, when it came back, of course, colors fade and, you know, walls get scratched. So, um, Obviously, the Spanish had the influence on the building itself and structure because um, if you go to many of the missions, they have, um, this is na native housing. And if you think of Southern California, I mean, this is really all you need, you know, um, and a, a bear hide or some animal hide and you're, you're set, you know. So they were comfortable, but, you know, um, the Spanish came and kind of took over and they, a lot of them didn't lead this kind of um, living until later on, um, about a hundred, you know, a, a fifty years, seventy-five years. Um, so I knew that I wanted to do something with La Virgen de Guadalupe. Then on the first week, we had um, that first blog, and I talked about the Aztec gods. There, I learned of different gods that some of you have already mentioned. And I came across Donati. And I had never heard of her, but she is, she represents like Mother Earth among other gods as well. Like um, Fabiola mentioned before, they often symbolize other gods as well. I could not, you know, change her appearance. Even trying to draw her face is <laughs> extremely hard. And I just, to me, if I would have represented her in a different way, she just wouldn't be La Virgen de Guadalupe. So I kept her as she is. For my third one, um, I put traditional Tonazzi. And here, I made her with serpent feathers because of Quetzalcoatl. And then behind her is the Aztec calendar, or <laughs> my version. And then, um, Water 
water's flowing underneath the footsteps, so this one is the canal. This one's the bridge because the footsteps are going in and over it. And then this one is a road, I'm sorry, so the road is where the foot traffic would go. So it's darker. Uh, let's see. Okay, and then, um, actually someone had mentioned something about infants, I think Linda did, about trying to keep the ground fertile or something. Did you say something like sacrifice? They sacrifice infants um, when they wanted it to, to rain. Okay. Well, this is sort of, I mean, it's not the same, but it's heading the same direction. Um, this is a, a woman, and then the words underneath are the Nahuatl words, which I won't even try to pronounce. And this one is a midwife, so there's a connection between the mom, the midwife with the baby, and the midwife, the little lines are in her face, that denotes age. And there's the baby in the, the crib. And what they do is they would take the, the afterbirth and the umbilical cord, and they would take that and plant it in the field to produce, they believe it would produce more fertility, better crops. So it's the connection between the baby, the field, and then additional baskets. Sure, she changed it and uh, really Santa Maria the Utla, the That's from Bernal, the book the Broken Spears. Yeah. I started combining it, but I gave that's the last one I was finishing them last night and I gave up on it. I combined the Spears and the Museo de Mexico de Ecología. There's that, I remember. Um, it had a different goddess, and so I, I added the goddess Cuatlicua, or yeah, I the, added that other god, the Earth Mother, and they all merge. Um, so it's like Donatzi, and the flowers are named. Okay, so this is my project, and it's called From Malinali to La Malinche, and I, I originally had them set up up there, but since this surface is so smooth, the tape kind of slid off, and they're a little bit heavy, so, but they did stick. Okay, so what my thesis was that La Malinche, she's, she's the villain, right? She's the villain in the story, although she probably never actually took a sword and killed anybody. <laughs> um, she, she's, a bit, she's a bad guy. Um, so I wanted to kind of tell the story of who she was from what we know. There are only a few lines and, and you know, it's only like a, a couple pages in Bernal Diaz's and maybe, you know, maybe Cortez mentioned a woman who helped him translate, but that's about all we have. And um, so this mostly is from what, we, what Bernal Diaz tells us about who La Malinche was and who she became after you know everybody you know got their hands on her story. So I want to start you guys off with this poem. Part is getting us started, you know, to hit that. There you got it. <laughs> 